Have you ever seen it in real life? No, we haven't. So naturally, I'm just at home eating cheese balls <laughs> on a couch, just like that's not that fucking hard. <laughs> You know, hey, listen, you're the champion at that. <laughs> you know, let's, let's just put that out there. Like, everyone's a champion at their own thing, and we're all champions at looking at our phones yeah. and judging people. Confused breakfast listeners, this is a quick message for you. I'm literally seconds away from pushing the button to start the intro music. Yeah. But I want to remind you mm. about our favorite whiskey in the entire world, Cedar Ridge. They've been a sponsor of this podcast for a long time now, so you already know everything there is to know about this amazing company. I don't need to tell you they were named Distillery of the Year in 2017. I don't need to tell you that their delicious products include flagship bourbon, quintessential American single malt, and their amazing collaboration with Slipknot. Fuck at it. Which we are drinking right now. I don't need to tell you that you can literally grab a bottle at your local stores all around the Midwest, and if you can't find it, you can directly order it online at cedarridgewhiskey.com. I don't have to tell you any of these things because you already know it. I've been telling you this for months. you got to know by now. So as I cheers my two fucking friends and we consume some incredible Cedar Ridge whiskey, before we start this episode, consider buying a bottle. You won't be disappointed. And you'll make us so happy. We are we are true when we say we think it's the best whiskey. True. Slauncha, start the show. Well, hello there, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Confused Breakfast Podcast. Do you remember the pure joy of a trip to the video rental store as a kid? Yeah. The excitement of walking down the aisles, browsing the names and the artwork, and finally deciding the movie you were going to take home with you. Sure, it's hard to beat the ease of the modern era and streaming platforms where it can be negative 25 degrees and you don't even leave your house, yeah. but there was something truly special about making that trip as a child, picking a movie out by hand, and watching it when you got home. On this podcast, we revisit and dissect some of our favorite childhood movies from that magical era to see if they still move us the way they did as kids. I'm your host, Mike Schulte. Joining me, as always, the reigning three-time pushcart champions of Iowa, Sean Pryor and AJ Vince. How the heck are you? It's not a real... Actually, it's, it's incredibly hard because there's barely any hills in Iowa. <laughs> yeah. It's really tough. Really tough to be this good at what we do. Yeah. And when when you have three years of winter and only one season of summer every year, right? It's hard to do a, a we, downhill. We should race. have done bob sledding instead. We should have. <laughs> yeah. All right, boys. Time to introduce today's movie. On this episode, we discuss a movie that made us want to travel to Jamaica and avoid Calgary at all costs. <laughs> a movie that taught us to follow your dreams, even if you had to make a quick switch and do something that you know absolutely nothing about. The uh, second best Disney movie ever, which coincidentally makes it the second best Olympic movie. Mm. See if you can see where I'm going on that one. I get you. We are, of course, talking about 1993's Cool Running. And for those of you looking to get a refresher on the movie quick, Disney Plus streaming this as of the recording of the episode in the beginning of January 2022, the year of our Lord and Savior, Holly Selassie. Uh, so we're moving on. <laughs> Holly Selassie. Rastafari. Uh, in order to properly dissect and review this movie with a modern eye, again, we must first dissect this with pure nostalgia break it down so aj we're gonna start with you tell us the first time you saw the movie tell us all about that nostalgic rating disney channel baby yeah baby yeah, disney dude. channel baby that's all i gotta say i guess that's all i can oh. think of <laughs> uh it, i know oh, cool, yeah. <laughs> i always i always loved it because i loved john candy and again in my young younger years brain I just thought John Candy was Uncle Buck, and then he was just doing Uncle Bunk, uh, Uncle Buck <laughs> adventures, <laughs> yeah. you know. And so he just happened to be uh, in Jamaica this time around. Um, but, but I, I loved, I loved this movie. Um, I thought it was super fun um, when I was a kid. And I guess giving it a rating, I, I'd probably rate rate this somewhere around ooh six point nine. Six point nine or Sean, <laughs> Sean, what about you, bud? Uh, yeah, this is. I don't know if I saw it on Disney Channel. I must have, but I definitely saw the VHS down in my uncle's basement while they were all drinking, and me and my brother just wanted to watch, you know, Richie Rich or Cool Runnings. <laughs> um, 
So I that's when I first saw it. <laughs> Those two movies. Yeah, I just painting the picture. <laughs> 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 um, uh, yeah, no, I, I I liked it back then. Obviously, John Candy is you can't get any better than that. Like yeah. it's it when, whenever he's on screen, it's a good movie. Um, and so probably back then, I probably would have said, uh, yeah, I like it. It's a good movie. Six, sixer for Sean for Six me. Out of ten. Uh, this was this was a big movie for me. I I used to watch it all the time. It was one of those movies where my parents got smart. We would rent it continuously from from the <laughs> rental place yeah. to where they're like, we should just buy this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they bought the VHS copy. We had it. Do you guys it w- just want this? Do you guys just want to watch just, this? I'll just all give time? it to you. But it was one of the movies where uh, my parents bought a Dodge Caravan, a little minivan, and we would take a lot of travel trips back and forth from St. Louis, where I had moved to Iowa, and we had the nice little VHS oh, yeah. TV combo mm. that plugged into the cigarette lighter. Yep. Mm. This was one of the movies we always watched, always um, funny, touching amazing soundtrack we will get into that yeah. this is one of my i just ordered this on vinyl it seems nice. to be the oh, theory wow. that the movie we do i'm like oh gotta order oh, that soundtrack on vinyl, vinyl. <laughs> I I thank, god for vinyl. Those, thank god for those boutique labels out there like waxwork and shit like that yeah. always doing these kinds of movies that's what i'm saying so i'm like a nostalgia rating i'm like an 8.8 .8. that puts it at a 7.23 uh-huh. for nostalgic rating which ties with christmas story that seems to be kind of huh. So right about the middle of the pack for nostalgic rating yeah. uh, for this movie. Okay. Yeah. So next, we'd like to lock down all the pertinent, important details of the movie. Set the stage. Sean, that's your job. What do you got? Here we go. Produced by Don Steele and Chris Melodendry. You got it. <laughs> cool, man. Music by Hans Zimmer, dudes. Yeah. Can oh, you believe it? My God. <laughs> Cinematography by um, Fed, Fed and Papa Michael. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Editing by Bruce Green, story by Lynn Seifert and Michael Ritchie, screenplay by Lynn Seifert, Tommy Swerdlow, Michael Goldberg. <laughs> You're killing <laughs> it. You're doing really good. <laughs> yeah. You're Directed great, by man. John Turtletob. T- t- he likes totals. <laughs> totals. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hey, we're having a good time. It's fun. <laughs> it was really fun. <laughs> Calm down. <yeah. laughs> Cast: Doug E. Doug, Leon, Raul D. Lewis, Malik Yoba. Raymond J. Barry, Peter Outerbridge, and that's opposed to enter, <laughs> and our Lord and Savior, John Candy. JC. Early in the script writing, it was said the film was not funny enough and lacking key elements that would make it work. The film was originally supposed to be a more serious sports movie, having the working title of Blue Mega. Before John Turtletop signed on to direct, Jeremiah Chechik was on board to direct, but moved on to make Benny in June, which he would also make A Christmas Vacation. Oh! Oh, Jesus. Yeah. That's, that's a recent movie for us. Yeah, when getting replaced by, uh, you know what? <laughs> Disney originally wanted Kurt Russell for the role <laughs> of Coach Blitzer, but John oh, Candy. Oh, damn. Yeah, right? Okay. But John Candy personally insisted on portraying the coach and agreed to take a pay cut just to do the film. Sounds uh-huh. very He's John Candy. He's the best man, man. God damn it. What a wonderful person. Cuba Gooding Jr., Denzel Washington, Eddie Murphy, Wesley Snipes, Marlon Wayans, and Tupac Shakur were all considered for the bobsled team. Well, Cuba couldn't do it because it's in Jamaica. He's doing <gasps> sled dogs so. instead. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, oh, that's, yeah. 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 Okay. Yes, of course. Yeah, got, I saw where you're going with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let it go. I don't. I don't like any Cuba, of those choices huh? for this movie. No. Um, I mean, this feels like it needed to be the cast that it was. I agree. It just feels like. I mean, I th- obviously they were aiming for a movie that they wasn't like just a Disney title. They were yeah. aiming for like high, you know, like high yeah. studio kind of stuff. So we'll get Denzel yeah. Washington. It's, like, it's just not <laughs> no. going to happen. I know. Uh, the film was <laughs> shot in Calgary and Jamaica in February and March of 1993. Released on October 1st of 1993, the film debuted at number three and gained 154,856,263 worldwide. And that's what I have so far. You know what Ooh. I've started to notice uh, when since we've been doing the show that other countries will just change the names of movies? We've, we've had yeah. that come up where they're like, oh, but it was called this in, in our country. Right. right. First of all, I don't understand how you can just change the name of a movie based on what country it is. But this one had two different. This was known as the Rasta Rocket in mm. France. 
and it was known as cold buttocks in Norway. <laughs> I like that one. I, I feel like <laughs> I like that one. I feel like I'm into that, right? Like oh. I can't buttocks. imagine like a, a family in Norway just being like, "Hey, want to pop on cold buttocks?" Yeah. <laughs> so it's one of our favorite movies. So does uh. that mean that like in the middle of the movie when he's like, "We're gonna call it Cool Runnings," they were like, "We're gonna call it Cold Buttocks." Cold Buttocks. And they're like, "Yeah, good uh, good name." I like that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's a title that should sell. <laughs> So, uh, so th- this isn't in the back corner of Family Video, where there's like other buttock movies. No, no. Okay, got How it. How dare got you? It. Okay, <laughs> no. Well, before we get into AJ's segment, we want to tell you about a cool new sponsor that we have. This is actually going to be a super fun kind of process, actually, because yes. you essentially get to come along with us on the journey. We got contacted by a company called Felix Gray. Yeah. If you haven't heard of them, they make blue light filtering glasses. Yep. These lenses are made to essentially like filter out the blue light wavelengths that come from all of our screen times, right? Our phones, our TVs, right. our computers. And like I'm really glad they reached out i mean because we're we're getting a couple pairs in the mail they're on the way we haven't got them yet but i've been noticing that i'm getting a lot more headaches like the yeah. longer i sit at my computer editing these episodes making tiktoks i just seems like by the end of it i'm getting these headaches and like my sleep patterns are kind of weird mm-hmm. the last couple months because i find myself laying in bed with my phone right up to my face <laughs> watching a movie <laughs> which like can't be good right and we know that this is from blue light like right. this blue light causes all these issues among even worse conditions they're thinking so um we also know we're not getting a rid of our screens anytime soon. Like no, that's not gonna happen. I, I mean, how much so. time do you spend in front of a screen in your day? Yes, a lot. So getting a pair of these glasses is something I'm legitimately excited to try out. They're in the mail right now. We're gonna report back to you with some honest, true results. Uh, but if you're like us, you're pretty confident this is gonna be awesome. Yeah, so these changing. affordable, stylish glasses will be a game changer. Go check them out. Uh, non-prescription and prescription available, nice. which is pretty cool. That's really cool. Go to. Feed FelixGrayGlasses.com slash confused. That's F E L I X G R A Y glasses.com slash confused. Free shipping, free returns, free exchanges. Felix Gray gra- <laughs> Grasses. Damn, yeah, I was doing so good. You were doing so good, for Michael. <laughs> FelixGrayGlasses.com slash confused. Hell yeah. All right, so before we get into the scene-by-scene film review, AJ does some research for us, hooks us up with ratings, reviews. Uh, we got to know. Let's let's hear all about this. All right there, Tomato fella. Tomato Oh, sorry. <laughs> Wait for it, Mike. What the fuck? Sorry. Go ahead. The tomato! tomato! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Can't wait for our first live show when everybody <laughs> does that. <laughs> uh, this is uh, this is an interesting one actually on the tomato meter because it's certified fresh, but at probably one of the lower ones I've seen. Okay, seventy six percent. Seventy six certified fresh. Yeah. Where do you think that com- that comes in? Right about middle of the pack of all the movies we've done. Tomato meter is tied with Goonies. Damn. Okay. So that's critically thinking they th- the critics think Goonies and Cool Runnings is the same. Okay. Wow. Okay. All right. Okay. Just, just throw that out there. Sure. Huh? Okay. Eighty one percent the audience is uh agreed to for the most part, but a little bit more. They, a little higher. Oh, a little I higher. like it. I like it a little bit more oh. there, Raj. Um if we're going to IMDB, it's a seven point out of ten. Seven out of ten. That's pretty good, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So Absolutely. S- seven is there's actually listen to these movies that are all sevens that we've reviewed. Bill and Ted Uncle Buck, Monster Squad. Hmm. There you like, go. There you go. Yeah. I mean, it's good yeah. company. That's it's perfect. To that be is in. like the the spot, the sweet spot for like a cult movie. I feel yeah. like. You know? Yeah. 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 Uh, I've got to say here, fellas, we've got so, uh, it's a lot of it's a lot of praise, uh, honestly, from our critics. Uh, we have the Washington Post said a wholesome, engaging, frequently hilarious, ultimately inspirational film. They nice. give it a ninety out of a hundred. Damn. Yeah. You know, it's pretty wow. pretty pretty standard. I suppose. That's uh, wild stuff there. They also, the Telegraph said, uh, Cool Runnings is a charming tale of determined underdogs with plenty of laughs, moments of real tension, and five engaging performances. Mm. And then we got we to gotta have a few, uh, a few uh, amazing, perfectly eloquent <laughs> Google reviews. Some, de- some Debbie Downers. <laughs> I don't um, get it. <laughs> well, yeah, so... 
This is a, this is a, this is a one star review uh, that that came uh, a year ago. Listen up from Travis Newquist, and he of course, he Travis. said Travis Travis had the audacity to, to say at a one star review, movie was great, would watch again. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I like to so. think no. I like to think that the, that we've gotten a few one stars. Yeah. You know, I'd like to think that they just forgot to hit the fight. Like right. you know, they just didn't know that they had to select they a star missed. rating. Yeah, they I made it. So. <laughs> I hope to fuck. So oh, but one means best. Oh yeah. shit. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> well, three three months ago, uh, Keanu, but not Reeves. Uh, Keanu. Uh, Melandish. No one else is named Keanu. <laughs> this person's called Keanu Melandish. One star three months ago. The music, the movie was boring. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much, but make it better. We can't make it better. <laughs> we already made it. We need to make it better. Let's do some reshoots, like the entire movie. Let's just reshoot it and make it better, guys. Should they, we just can we just do that? Can they do like Wet Hot American Summer and just shoot it with the same people? It's <laughs> like way yeah. older. Do a do a prequel, but the same actors twenty years later. <laughs> yes, they can definitely do that. I would love that. <laughs> make uh, it better. A year ago, three star review came on through, and uh, I think this is a little bit more helpful than 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 those two. <laughs> It says, it's uh, good. I liked it. One star. It sucks. <laughs> Three stars. I watched this on Friday night. It was a good movie. That's it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Someone <laughs> legitimately hey. took time out of their day. To be like, I need to tell people. As a this. decent oh, way shit. to spend a Friday night. Uh, That's while, good. While diving through this, I, I come to realize that Cool Runnings must also be a storefront somewhere because <laughs> there was, there's a lot of people who are sitting there and saying, your store, there's no mask being worn in your store. <laughs> a lot of I Yelp prefer reviews. to w- shop at Walmart where people care about other people. And there's another one that's sure. like the, the bald headed lady was being really rude. <laughs> bald headed lady? <laughs> yeah, in your store. And I, so there's so a cool running store. There's a cool store. running store somewhere that's just getting hated you're, on. You're getting some negative reviews. You might want to take a step back and see what you can do about that. I like I'm, to think that oh. people went to IMDb <laughs> to review. The cool running store. <laughs> that would and, be and wonderful. And vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody reviewed the movie on their website. Exactly. <laughs> I didn't like this movie. We're a store. We're a store. <laughs> I love how John Candy was there. So <laughs> just they're mixing them up. <laughs> Sounds like a place in Aspen. <laughs> All right, I'll give you an actual. This is an actual negative review. Thank you. In fact, the only one star review that actually exists on IMDb. Okay, that's roast this out. bitch. Uh, this is cool shouldn't be used with this movie <laughs> this was uh, an October 10th 1999 so they probably just got done watching the Matrix and then watched this and uh, were like oh yeah this doesn't hold a candle yeah. to the Matrix I hope they tune into this podcast they're gonna be in for a treat <laughs> <laughs> so October 10th Dark 10 said this movie was awful just flat out lame I didn't want to see it when it came out in theaters. Thank God I didn't waste my money. And I ended up seeing it on video with a friend that had it. I was around 13 when I saw it, and I still thought it was lame then. Not funny. Not cool. Mm. No, nothing in there is an actual review. It's nothing. It's not even a review. No, it didn't say why it no. wasn't cool. No, it's just not cool. And we do understand that the cool's not referring to like cool. It's, it's cool. like cold, right? You are know we, what? There are wasn't we referring even referring to that or there wasn't even that much running <laughs> other than at the start. <laughs> so this movie couldn't even be cool or really running. <laughs> Robert Pattinson wasn't even there and and he's pretty cool. They, so they only ran for like thirty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> There it is. Is that all you got? That's my guy, guys. <laughs> well, my dudes, what do you say? We take our podcasting talents to the Olympics by hiring a washed up coach, practicing in the wrong climate and with the wrong gear, and then diving headfirst into the world of Olympic bobsledding. Uh huh. Feel the rhythm. Feel, Feel the, the rhyme. rhythm. Get on up. It's bobsled time. time. Cool runnings. <laughs> I should have told you I was doing that. So you could have said podcast. We, I said you said podcast. Yeah, we'll get there. Here we go. Podcast bobsled. You know, potato, tom- potato tomato.
So Doris Manick is training for the 1988 Olympic Games and hopes to be a gold medal winner just like his father. Before his trial run, Doris visits his friend Sanka Coffee, who is competing in a push cart derby. Later that day, during Doris's qualifying race, he is accidentally tripped by another racer and does not qualify for the Olympics. He confronts the head of the Olympic Committee about a second chance, but he is denied. Before you go anywhere, you did say derby as as, derby. Le, as Leon says it. Derby. derby, derby, derby. I love that. So I just <laughs> want to give you praise. It's a bagel. <laughs> derby. Uh, great opening already. Kick Dude. ass fucking reggae song with a sunrise oh, yeah. in the background. So badass. I will actually challenge any of you to just. Uh, I'm sure. I like. I said. I ordered the vinyl. Uh, that that it is an existing soundtrack, and it's really good. Yeah. If yeah. you're gonna go on like a tropical vacation, or it's warm where you live, or you just want some good vibes, it's the Di- it's Disney version of reggae music. So yeah. like, if you're not a, a reggae head, but you want to like get some good vibes, it's a really good soundtrack. I I love reggae, and I'm glad to hear that you do yeah. too. Like, I and later on in this soundtrack, you'll hear some Bob Marley. Oh, Cover of Bob Marley, yes. steer it up. Yep, uh, mm-hmm. I love hearing it. It just makes me fucking happy. It does. It just makes me really, really happy. It's that Jamaican culture that they are very good to capitalize on. That that just feel good. The islands, the mm-hmm. oh yeah, yeah, reggae. You know, I mean, it's it, it starts you off right away in this great vibe. But I have a question: If you're, let's say, you're a hundred meter sprinter, which Derice is, mm-hmm. I would assume that your training would be just running the 100 meters over and over and over, right? Sure. Like not, just running not. 100 meters and going back and starting over again instead of just like a long distance jog around town. Uh, am I am I weird and th- good, like good I'm not endurance. a runner, but you don't really need the endurance, right? You need 10 seconds. That's Sorry, true. 9 9. You need 9 9. 9.9 9. 9. 9. seconds better than endurance. his dad. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I guess you're right. Well, but like if I guess he likes running. Look, like people like, like running. Mike, you live the life, okay? When you're going to the Olympics, you live right? the life. You live the life. <laughs> you show that off that backside. That is right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, cat calling fruit women. Yeah, <laughs> I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> Sign oh, me yeah. up. I wish I had that around here. <laughs> be a lot of encouragement. That's the narcissist talking. You know, we, we need them reviews. Pump those up. We need those reviews. <laughs> Say that our backsides are fire, <laughs> even though we sit on them. I, you're right, though. You're living that life. You live the life, man. You're, you're out. Like he's already you mentally in the Olympics. Yeah, he's he's making his appearances around town, so people are like, "That's that guy that's going to the Olympics." Yeah, exactly. People, everybody knows him. Everybody, everybody knows, knows he's going to win the race. True. Yeah, everybody knows that he's going to the Olympics. They probably know who his father is too. And like what we yeah. find out later on, right? They know that his father was in the Olympics and stuff like that. Well, yeah. He clearly inherited a fuck ton of money because it's implied. This is the first time I've ever realized this that he's a school teacher. It's she says. His wife, before he goes on a run, says, "Well, you should be great in papers or something like oh. that." Oh, wow, I never but caught that. Did you see their house? It's yeah. like right on the water. The most go- so like, yeah, he's. I think he's living off of his dad's uh, old glory, man. All right, that's what I'm thinking. Hey, why weedy not? box money? Weedy box. Get that weedy <laughs> yeah, box. Yeah, right. right. That's right. Get that weedy Just box. Just saying. Damn. Uh, we go from very happy to, to be honest, fucking heartbreaking, man. Yeah. This the race scene. Is, oh, you're already going to the race scene? I was. I'm there. You I, can't go to the race scene yet. Come on, we got. Go we got. No, back. we can go come, back. You want to no, go push cart? I want to talk go, push cart. Let's real go push. Let's push cart. All I want to talk about is how there ain't no fucking way this push cart race is happening in 2022. <laughs> 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 they're like, they're riding yeah. these rickety ass cars down, oh, no. and then you get like a kid, a kid to go head first in the front of the. What is the point? True. Yeah. What's the point of the secondary person on a push cart? I know nothing about push cart races. Well, I mean, it looks like. It reminds me of like uh, little rascals, kind of. Yes, yes. Like, you know what I mean. <laughs> At the same time, you're, it's like is San- is San- but Sanka is not the only adult in this, right? It seems like everyone else is an adult, and they also have an adult on the front of the they sled, have- but he's got a little kid on the front. Okay, okay. Sanka, Sanka. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I don't know. I just- this is. I'd like they to think it would be canceled. Cards- Man, it's too dangerous. <laughs> it's this is way too dangerous. <laughs> this is too dangerous for those kiddos. I'm sorry. You're right. I mean, there, there's not enough pads being had. Oh. Like, no, you're right. This is canceled. We we are introduced to probably, I mean, it's sin to say that John Candy can be taught by anybody else, but yeah. Dougie Doug I think he's the in best. this role is Dougie so Doug good. Is <laughs> phenomenal. He's sometimes slightly too much, sometimes 
He can he but, can ham it up and everything but, here and there, but it totally it's it's like a Disney Channel original, yeah. and I, I there's a place for those, and I I like that. He was always my favorite character growing up. He's still my favorite character. Yeah. Upon yeah. critical rewatch. Yeah. He he is he is funny. He is the comic relief. Obviously, he is that goddamn egg that he's kissing. <laughs> Lucky egg. It's just who's kissing that egg? Come on. No. no. <laughs> no. Is that gonna go bad egg. at some point? Yes. And apparently, it was made out of rubber. It was a hard boiled a rubble, rubber egg. <laughs> yeah. And like even then, I'm like, I'm definitely not kissing a rubber egg. I don't know where you put that. Uh, he puts it next to his other eggs is where he apparently <laughs> keeps it. <laughs> I'll lead you to the most heartbreaking point here, okay? Right. Because there is some comic relief. One of my favorite reactions of Sanka's is when they're at the race. Yeah. And he's like, I'm, I'm more worried about Big Baldy over, Big there. Baldy over there. <laughs> and and when Yule Brenner does his thing, they cut back to Sanka. He's like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> like I, yeah. I'm terrified of that, man. It's a great oh, comic yeah. re- relief from him throughout oh, yeah. the whole movie. Oh, yeah. he he He's... Relieving the tension yes. the whole time. Yes. Uh, like I say, sad moment, guys. I like. Well, I like how Junior, uh, like immediately, like I fucking like this guy Hell so yeah. much. Yeah. He's like, oh man, it'd be an honor to race with you. I can't wait to. Like, I hope. I hope we both get in. It'd be cool. And he turns to <laughs> Yule Brenner. Yule Brenner, and he's like, I must break you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. You know? it, he's just the J- Jamaican, like <laughs> Ivan Drago. <laughs> Ivan Drago. Exactly. Oh my god. <laughs> he's just like, Yul Brenner is the <laughs> Jamaican <laughs> Ivan <Drago. laughs> Don't touch me. <laughs> yeah. Don't touch me. Um, I don't know if you guys read this or not, but the way that uh, um, Raul D. Lewis got the role, he was he was just like a kind of a, a off screen uh, helping hand for the film, oh. really before they started filming and everything. And um, he was just kind of reading people's lines and, and saying them back and forth, just like giving uh, like actual actors who were cast already something to talk to um and then they liked him so much they're just like you just got to be in this movie dude really like, yeah we, and so they just threw him in that's great yeah i, th- I think he's great because once we get to the four people together they're all so different you've got this Darice confident leader yeah you've got yule brenner clearly with a terrible backstory yeah whatever has happened to him has been real bad unfortunate yeah and we don't even need to go in no. like, we don't know but we know he's had a bad life and he's right. got that tough exterior sanka doesn't give a shit Right. He's all about smoking ganja, <laughs> which they don't put in the Disney movie. No. Uh, and then, yeah, and then um, Junior Bevel is just like looking for friends yeah. and yeah. like a, a normal life. He's had a un- completely abnormal, rich True. life his whole time. Absolutely. And it's so cool to have them all come together. It's very Disney. Yes, absolutely. All right, now talk about so your heartbreak. sad story. <laughs> Wait, well, one more thing I want to say. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like, like they shoot this in slow motion, and it's like you can watch the train crash before it yeah. happens, yeah. and like Junior just starts to fumble, and it's all it's all very believable. Yeah. Like it all looks very real, yeah. and you because we know everybody knows, like everybody knows before the audience knows that Darius is going to the Olympics. Yeah, and then he's not, and then I then I I can't help but think to myself, and he's like watching the people who finish the race Dude, basically. That's like, the shot yeah. that fucks me. That up. And then they like, come back, the dirt on his face, yep. and like they, they come back waving the like the flag, kind of like they were just like they're gonna go in, and those guys are going, and then I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, but Jamaica, you shouldn't let those guys go. You should not let those guys go. You should find out every way you can to cheat yeah. and do another race. Yeah, you should redo this race. Like <laughs> you, you had three people, and and the people that you, the guys, the one of the guys you know at is at going. At least one of those guys. At least one of maybe those dudes. T- maybe Yule Brenner's going. If they're if they tripped up Darius, they had to have been close. Yeah. 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 So you just have to think to yourself: it's like you're going to send those guys on technicality to the Olympics to represent you. I don't. I don't like and it. And like one race, in, one, on one, one race. qualifying race is gonna is gonna say it, you know. And then they have to go qualify for the Olympics. No, that what the right? way I d- determined it was this was the final. These were the final eight racers. That with the top three will be going to the Olympics of this race. Like this is the final qualifier, and then they go to the Olymp- they at least go okay. to the Olympics. There they go. I've been watching a documentary called Icarus on Netflix. It's all about the Russian doping scandal from oh, the Olympics shit. of past years. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like if this had happened in Russia, they would be like, "Race, uh, race happens again." Yeah. Nope. Yep. Uh, somebody was. Yep. It no just, big deal. It until, just goes again until who they want until to win. who they want to win. It just yeah. Goes I again. mean, like it. it 
you're right. If if any way they could have cheated, they should have done it. <laughs> well, <laughs> Jamaicans have way too much integrity to they just do, do that. They're <laughs> good people. Exactly. That's what it is. I think like right behind them is a sign that says like Jamaica is all about integrity. Yeah. Like, before they even start, Jamaica reading. plays yeah. fair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, rules are rules. Jamaica. <laughs> I'll just say how. Uh, um, Yul Brenner, uh, what's his uh, actor name? Does anybody know? Oh, jeez, it's Malik Yoba. 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 Um, the way he was cast is also interesting as well, is because he really wanted the part and was like dying for it, and so they uh, they auditioned him and like they were doing the audition process for everybody else too. But he made a song for the, about the bobsledding team that ac- that actually happened and. Uh, brought that to his audition, and that's oh what got him cast. We and got the one, actually, the Reese and the one, Junior. It's actually in the movie. Fosses of the fastest of Jamaican sprinters. Yep. So go to Olympics, fight for Jamaica. Yul Brenner wrote the song that he didn't want to sing in the first cool. place. Cool. Exactly. That's badass. <laughs> yeah, super badass. <laughs> also, the name Yul Brenner is an actual actor's name. He's a Russian actor. He's yeah. in the Magnificent Seven. He's uh, in, he's Ten, yeah. Commandments, Ten Commandments, King and I. The West original World. West World. Yes. I remember my dad would laugh so hard. They, they'd they be like, Yule right. Brenner? And, I know. And they all kind of went like, Yule Brenner? I, and I never understood why yeah. Why is that a weird name. And my dad would always laugh. So full well knowing, yeah, oh, yeah, it's that, it's that weird exotic actor I never actor noticed guy. it when I was a kid. Yeah. And then this time I'm like, oh, I fucking know that name now because yeah. I'm a snob cinema person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a- Yule, Yule Brenner? Yeah. Like, they all kind of <laughs> do that look. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's pretty awesome. All right, so let's move this on. So Doris learns about a man named Irving Blitzer who tried to turn Doris's father into a bobsledder. He takes Sanka to go meet Irv Blitzer and convinces him to train them to bobsled. The next day, they try to get two more teammates and have to settle with Junior Bevel, the man who tripped Doris in the race, as well as Yule Brenner, another racer who was tripped. The team begins training, which initially does not go well, but they slowly improve. Ice? 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 He's so good. <laughs> I love Sanka. Sanka's the best because he like he, he he does that thing where he's like, "You got to tell me that we've been through a whole heap mm-hmm. together," well, he and then it. he says, "Nah, not a chance." No. <laughs> Ice. <laughs> Ice. But then he even goes, he even goes. I didn't hear this when I was a kid. He goes, "So let's talk about the Bill Sled team. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Bob Sled, <laughs> Bob Sled. <laughs> whoever it is." <laughs> <Whatever>. <laughs> Ice. <laughs> who's the push? Who's the best push cart driver ever? You're looking at him. So are you with me? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I love that about him. But too. why did Doris choose bobsledding? Right. Actually, I want to point this out. I was really mad. I never knew this as a kid, but this time around, I was like, "What? What are they talking about?" So this is 1987, and he's training to go to the Summer Olympics. But then right. he, but then they're like, oh, well, you can wait three months and go to the Winter Olympics. I'm like, That's not how that works. No, yeah. This is continuity error. The Olympics are t- two years, then it's the next, then it's the then summer, it's, then two then years, then the winter. Winter, yeah. I was so mad about, like, how, come on, you could fix this. This is so dumb. But I went back, and so in 1992, there was a Winter Olympics, and then in 1994, there was the Lilyhammer Winter Olympics in order to to create the every two years thing. Mm. Really? They they realized, like, this is kind of dumb. Why don't we do them every two years? They were initially on the same year. Oh. Winter and Summer Olympics were the same gotcha. year. And then they eventually threw yeah, in. because why uh, wouldn't they be? Uh, yeah, right? But now they're like, no, let's do it every other two years so that the networks can have a relief from, sure. from like, Olympics. And, and people can train. train for so people can train and stuff. So I was really put off about that. But now there you go. There's your answer. Yeah, that makes sense. Makes so sense. there really was an 88 summer and an 88 winter. Uh. Irv Blitzer. Disheveled John Candy, dude. Disheveled, five o'clock shadow, John Candy. Bookie. Basically, Uncle Buck, who decided exactly. to cut his losses and just go to Jamaica, <laughs> right? I mean, this is this Got is rid of Shanice. Yeah. <laughs> Came to Jamaica. I don't want to work. The only problem is he can't, there's not much bowling down there, it seems like. Nope, <laughs> nope. He can't bring it. his boat. It's, Jamaica's a mountainous island. You yeah. can't bring that boat of a car down there. Right, exactly. <laughs> you got to get like a geo tracker or something <laughs> yes. like that. Uh, I, I love his introduction. Uh, mm-hmm. f- for John Candy, uh, where he and he and it's just he's sitting there <laughs> listening to the races, the horse races. The horses. Like, yes, 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 tumbleweed, yes, tumbleweed, tumbleweed. Yes. yes, tumbleweed, no tumbleweed. 
<laughs> no. I like how the radio kind of talks back at him. He's like, you'd be a fool to even think that Tumbleweed could even win this race. <laughs> and the, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. He's beating the radio. <laughs> Didn't John John Candy? You sure, this is our guy. <laughs> <laughs> John Candy looked. We we've been doing so many John Candy movies, and it's a lot in the earlier in his career. And this like took me aback a little bit. Like he looked rough in this movie. Yeah, he looked bigger than he'd been. Uh, in fact, they've got that scene later on where he's inside of the bug. Like they're pushing him in the right. car. Oh yeah, and you're like, the whole thing. holy shit, man! And so, like, I'm, of course, I got to look. I'm like, how soon was this? And it, uh, fi- this movie came out. He died five months later. It was his wow. last big movie that he completed. He had a couple then, release after yep, this. Wagons then... East and Canadian Bacon right. were in like uh, production. He he wasn't finished with them yet. Okay, mm-hmm. but he look, man, he does like look pretty pretty rough in it, and it kind of makes me sad because we've been like. Almost going through the John Candies. Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh no, the John are. Candies. Oh, he's uh, no, he's gonna die. No, yeah, I, I miss you, John Candy. I don't like that. It's it's a really cool, almost kind of final role for him though to just kind of take the backseat on this one a little bit. Yeah. And let the four bobsledders yeah. kind of shine, and then him just kind of enhance everything. It's it's kind of a cool trajectory, and I know it is heartbreaking, but it's also kind of heartwarming in the fact yep. that it's just like. Uh, and the the fact that he demanded or he was rallying for himself to get this role, like, no, not Kurt Russell. He's yeah. Gonna, he's going to be in another Disney movie that's going to be on ice. <laughs> I'm going to take this one because I fucking, like, he loved it. He, like, Canada, yeah. you know, he's from Canada. Um, I think I think that's just kind of commendable to just kind of be like, I'm not the star of this one, but I kind of want to. I need to be a part of this because I yeah. love it so much. And Absolutely. Well, I reached out to – that's that's a perfect segue. I reached yes. out to Dougie Doug, actually, and I, I wanted to see if he would maybe answer some questions. I, I told him about how much we love John Candy yeah. and, and the podcast, and I said, just tell us – I thought he'd maybe tell us a fun story about John Candy, and what he told us was so awesome. Let's play the – here, I'll play the clip right now so you can hear this. Uh, I want to talk about my movie called Runnix, and uh, I want to tell you a lovely story about the great John Candy, who also starred in that movie. Uh, He was a lovely man that uh, 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 we had a great time with. Uh, We went to his hotel room very early in the uh, filming of the movie. And uh, I don't know if this was a ritual of his, but he took each individual character of ours and played a song that he thought basically represented what that character meant and who the character was. And so it was great uh, acting, deconstructing, analytical work that we did together. Also, while we had uh, uh, drinks and, <laughs> and, and jokes and fun. Um, and at the end of it, he sa- he played uh, what he's, um, a song that he thought summarized the whole movie, which was the Rolling Stones, uh, You Can't Always Get What You Want. <laughs> Uh, so he played that for us, and uh, it was uh, just fantastic to get insight into not only his process, but his spirit. Uh, he was a very, very warm, very real, uh, very embracing person, uh, and uh, he talked a great deal about, because uh, uh, we were having some problems with the studio, kind of understanding the value of the film at that time, and uh, he was explaining to him, to us, what we thought the value of the film was and what the meaning of the film was and the importance of the film. And, uh, I, I, you know, it was, it was amazing how prescient and, uh, uh, he, he was because obviously it was a, it is a film that has impacted the world and, uh, and, uh, and, and four generations. Yeah. I mean, how cool is that? I mean, basically t- takes what we already know about John Candy and takes it to a whole nother level about him picking the th- songs for him. The, and, the yeah. fact that he like brought them into the hotel room and was just like, Hey, like hanging out. And then Doug, as Dougie Doug says, like drinking a little bit, you yeah. know? <laughs> like I love that aspect. Yeah. Um, but then like he, he's like, he played them the song. You can't always get what yeah. you want. What you thought was, you know, the, the clinical of this movie, which totally makes sense. It once makes we get so to the end. Makes absolute sense. sense. Yeah. Wow. I, just, just so cool, and and so cool of of Dougie Doug to tell us that story. I mean, you could tell he f- felt something special about that. Definitely, and he was absolutely. Like, ah, yeah, I really got to tell this story, and I didn't know that. And I thought that was so awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. Awesome that he would do that for us and send that out to us, like Dougie Doug, man. baby. We'll probably be doing more John Candy, but <laughs> I'm not gonna cry in this one. I'm not. 
so shut, it, shut up. I'm not going <laughs> to. So there, there are some things we'll start bringing up here uh, that I there not much of this movie was a true story. <laughs> Right, uh, and like that is important to note, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> There's some important things. I thought this was gospel when yeah. I was a kid, and you start reading about what really happened, and yeah. it was not that close. So the the way the way this happened was two in real life, two American businessmen had the idea of Jamaican sprinters being bobsledders, but they couldn't get any track stars to join, so they just hired two guys from the military. They're just like, oh, you two guys, so you want to do this? Okay, cool. And they uh, they competed competed in the two man bobsled, yeah. And then later on said, "Oh, let's bring two more guys on to do the four man." So there was no Irv Blitzer, yeah. yeah. There was no famous track star that had a son that turned into a sprinter. That yeah, none of none, that was all made up to enhance this story. Okay, which is great. I mean, it yeah. it's a better story. It, <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> it is a story too about inclusion, which like it wasn't a thing at the time when that real story was happening too. But like. Just the fact, and we'll get to the end, but like a lot of the uh, crash footage is actually real. Yeah. Oh, God. And so that's a little heartbreaking to see, too. You know? <laughs> yeah. And all the, I mean, all that shit's fucking brutal. If we're going to get to like yeah. when, when they're showing the whole like classroom of people, yeah. the area, you guys are there? I, oh, I'm there. Okay. And I, I have to say, I think this is probably one of the funniest things. This is, this scene is all cartoon to me. Like, this is a cartoon. <laughs> this is like some, some sort of like Looney Tunes scene because it's just this full room people want to go to the olympics they have the potential like the is going to be there yeah. like oh man like this is a big deal this is real guys like there we got a DeReese shot wants me he, yeah he wants us to be there for him for him be a part of his team are you kidding <laughs> and then they get there and they're watching this. you're on the air sled god <laughs> <laughs> and watching this like 19 19- 50, 40s, like <laughs> 30. <laughs> the bobsled. <laughs> a beautiful contraption made out of mostly fossil wood. Mostly <laughs> dead people. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like, like you have John Candy, who's kind of narrating. You have a four-man team, uh, and you're going to go go down this ice, and it's just a death trap. And then they flip on the lights, and there's nobody there. <laughs> you, ha- you have expected to see a chair spinning and a yeah, cloud exactly. of smoke out the window. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I just thought it was super fucking funny. And then uh like uh Yul Yul Bren is still there. He's he there. walks he in, walks late. in yeah. late and and uh he's like wondering what's going on. Look, and then, it's Baldy. <laughs> Will you keep it down? <laughs> you, you know, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Will you please? Did you see how on edge he was at the race? <laughs> And then you get Junior who comes in too. He's like, "Oh, sorry, I'm late." Did and I miss they, the meeting? They see each other. He sits down like, "All right, yeah, <laughs> yeah." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh God, the interaction of between the teammates is very believable mm-hmm. between the actors and everything. I I love it, man. It's I feel like I've been in these experiences before. <laughs> the awkward moments of like, I don't like that guy. He's gonna kill me. <laughs> Now we got to work together. Uh, how about I draw a line down the middle of the head so it looks like a butt? <laughs> <laughs> but Junior, dude, Junior Bevel, we're, we're, he's not a goon. We're humanizing him anyway. Yeah, yeah. He would have, had he shown up on time, he would have been the only one left in the room. That's he would have stayed. That's true. Yeah, I yeah. think he would have just been like, all right, sounds good. Yeah. He doesn't want to work his fucking million dollar job. He wants Webster, to, Webster, and Cohen. He wants to be somebody, dude. <laughs> Come on now. And Cohen. Great and dog. Cohen. On that car. Oh, oh my God, that dog's amazing. Talking to his dad oh, with the yeah. dog. I love that. That, that <laughs> car. That car is dope beautiful. As yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can't have it for a prop because it's mine. I want God. that car. Oh, Damn. Son of a bitch. My prop is that dog and car. I want the dog on the back of the car. Uh, okay. I'm going to go with uh, one of the Jamaican bobsled jumpsuits. Dude, no. Yes. That Actually, you, I can see you wearing that around. I'm, I'm gonna go out in that, and the bulge is gonna be okay looking. <laughs> yeah, it's okay looking. Yeah. I'm gonna p- p- fluff it a lot. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Um, I, so here's what I think I want. I would like Sanka's dreadlock piece. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> yeah, I want that. That's what I want. Not his egg. The broken, the I one where the, they're training in the cold yep, weather. They're doing cold weather training. He pops his head out and he breaks a piece of his dread off because it's real. frozen. Okay. And I was like, oh, 
I want that. Okay. I want that piece of dreadlock. I, w- I want that. Apparently, they covered oh, that. That was a, actually a very fucking hot uh, inside of an ice cream truck. Uh, they it was just all uh, dry ice, and they put it all over Sanka or Dougie Doug, the actor. Weird. Just gave him a little prop prop dread. Yikes. I got a question for you. So they're talking about he he John Irv Blitzer makes Sanka not the driver. He's like, I'm the driver. He's like, No, you're not. You're the brake man. I'm the driver. I'm the driver. You're the brake man. So. If Sanka's not going to be the driver, then he shouldn't even be on the team, right? I'm I'm just wondering like why they had them reversed because he's a uh, push Leon, car driver. Uh, f- uh, Darius, oh. yeah, Darius. Darius is the runner, and he's, he's the fastest. Well, That's what the I'm car, saying, right? Ir- Irv Blitzer is saying that the the most focused and driven person on the team I get has that. to be the driver. Yeah. So okay, so that makes sense. But then if that is the case, Sanka's not a, a not a runner. Right. No, so he's then, be playing fi- catch up this find another find another guy. Right. Yeah. No kidding. It doesn't make sense in the grand scheme. It of really things. doesn't, because he's going to be playing catch up the entire time. To Completely play Olympic. I would think the brake runs. man's the most important runner because he's the last one pushing. That's yeah. what I would think too. I mean, they yeah, he gets them the momentum they need. Yeah. Right. Exactly. He's the last one to get in the bobsled. Yeah. I, and 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 if I was gonna put it there, I mean, I I would think if it's not Darius, then it would be Yule. You'll break. Okay, yeah, you'd you know? be the brake man. Yeah, true. You, that's a big, strong man, but you want back there. Irv, Irv's not really selling me here on this no. bobsledding thing. Like, do you really know, know what you're talking about? Yeah. Time Olympic gold medal champion. I'm, maybe you're going to get those stripped away. Oh, he did. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, but, oh, wait, wait. Yeah. <laughs> but S- Sanka provides in this moment uh, one of my favorite quotes of the movie that I use to this day. Uh, <laughs> when he gets in the back, he goes, ooh, the back is nice. <laughs> Any, anytime I get in somebody's car in the back, I go, ooh, the back is nice. <laughs> Very rarely does anyone know what I'm talking about, but when they are training and speaking of that, the, the beetle that John Candy's in, yeah. I like to think that that's how he just gets around. <laughs> like even like that as a is his car. Yeah. Like he just <laughs> drives around to Hollywood, just like with his head out of the sunroof. Just like, yeah, they're just, I'm just John Candy. Just what? Just, just like Fred Flintstoning it or exactly. something. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jesus. All right, so let's move this on. So scene three, the team's struggling to find the funding needed to get to the Olympics, but Junior provides the money to the team. They head to Calgary for the Olympic Games where the Jamaicans are not happy with the cold weather. Irv registers the team and uses a few favors to get them an old practice sled. After practicing in the cold and ice, they head to the track for their first practice run. They crash before making it down the hill and are ridiculed by all the other teams. The second run does not go much better. What is it with parents... And not wanting their kids to be athletes in movies. That's a great Why is question. that a trope? Why is that like why why wouldn't you want like I know I understand following the family steps and everything like that. So with uh Jesus Junior's uh dad, it's just like yeah, he wants he wants him to follow in his steps, but why not like give I just don't understand this trope over and over and over again. I'll have none of, no 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 more of this nonsense. Yeah. Webster, Webster, and Cohen. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're, dude. You're absolutely right. Wouldn't you think that if Junior, if Junior went to the Olympics and could put, I went to the Olympics on my resume. Don't you think that's a really good? Wouldn't that be good for your family name? Isn't that just least? good for everything? I think yeah. Webster, Webster, and Cohen would appreciate that. Yeah, I would I mean, think so. Yeah. Like, oh, we got an Olympian, an Olympian working in here our office. At our office. Yeah, you think you work hard? We got this guy working yeah, here. No, you know, <laughs> that's that's I, it. Writes itself. And you know, and Junior could get on his social medias and be like, "I work for Webster, Webster, there you and go, Cohen. Webster, exactly. Webster. You, you want to be like, you want to be like Olympian me? Yeah. Come to Webster, Come to Webster, and Webster, Webster, and Cohen. Yeah. You need help with your DUI? Webster, Webster, and Cohen." <laughs> <laughs> We want to help you. You got you got hurt on the job. Webster, Webster, <laughs> Cohen. I'm on. Uh, I, that's you're absolutely right, man. I I bet you. I bet you guys twenty dollars each that when they go to the Olympics, his dad's gonna show up again and be cheering him on. I bet you twenty dollars. You think so? You I'm think just so? gonna bet you twenty dollars. I'll take that, I'll take that right, bet. Cool. There you go. Take that. You guys saw it. You saw that. You guys saw we'll it. Take that sure bet. All right. Uh, them actually arriving in Canada, I think, is my favorite part. <laughs> yeah, so. I think I think that campy montage is just fuck because we've all you've all been there. You know, we live in Iowa and yeah. it's currently like zero degrees outside. Oh yeah, of yeah. course. And you do get used to it, but we've been where let's say you go on a tropical vacation in the middle of winter. You're gone for seven days. You yep. come back. It hurts. It yes, that <laughs> you had enough time to adapt yourself to eighty in degrees. Your soul yeah. and in your body. Yes, yes, it is a deep. 
deep, deep hurt. Yes. And like, so if, imagine living on an island your entire life in 80 degree temperatures and then right. walking out to negative 25 Celsius. With wind chill. <laughs> with love, wind chill. I love that shot is, <laughs> is one of my favorites. That follows up with one of my favorite lines, which is, it's all them walking and it's all on pace. And then you see John Candy exit and it's just like, no one follows <laughs> And it goes back. They, <laughs> they just drop like, their they're just like, what the fuck? <laughs> what is going on? How does this exist? You know what I you mean? You don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's one of those things. Like, so I've I've said um, I've gone on one of these vacations, right? Where you do go, you go to the island, like an island, right? We we went to Aruba uh, for our honeymoon, right? For my wife and I. And uh, at oh, one yeah, point, dude. I had told them, I said, yeah. "You're married." Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> yes, still am. That's a dope. And uh, <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I had actually really never seen the ocean, like the actual yeah. ocean, like until like I was here, like uh, at one of these places, right? And then somebody says back to me, like a uh, worker that we've been friendly with, like somebody who we met out while we were bouncing around, they're like, I've never seen snow. Yeah. And I'm like, I've seen snow every year of my life. And if it's like part, it's For ingrained nine in months. Me. And then, like you, you go back and you, you when you have those conversations yeah. of like how different it is and like how different these worlds are, you're like, yeah, I wouldn't walk the fuck out there either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and then they follow it up. And he's like, "Well, you guys cold?" He's like, "Well, it's, it's not so much the cold that'll get; it's the humidity <laughs> uh, yeah, that'll yeah. kill you." <laughs> and, well, and then Teresa's so, like, "Sanka, what you smoking, <laughs> man?" <laughs> I'm just breathing. I'm just breathing. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a th- thing. If you've never been in cold temperatures, you don't know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Smoke comes out of your because mu- the inside of your body is that much warmer than right. the outside. Yeah. You don't yeah. know that. Oh my gosh! I yeah. do like how the the music of the film emphasizes this too a little bit when they are like the shots of the plane come from like cool like. You know, like hanging out, Jamaican music. It's like a nice and, you know, it feels like nice weather. If if music could be a nice weather, you know, and then transitions into when they get to, to Canada and it's like a Canadian hillbilly blues. I love it. Uh, <laughs> it just, I mean, I it's, it. it seems like music that John Candy would listen to if he was Uncle Buck. <laughs> like, I just didn't get, like, the, the culture of Jamaica. Like, that makes sense if it's reggae music. But then they get to Calgary but and it's Calgary. like. <laughs> okay, but let me ask you this. I don't think. Calgary and Canada have a culture of music. I don't know. So I don't like, know. Like, what is it? I don't, is it OK Go? I don't know. <laughs> Nickelback. It's a lot. Of <laughs> Justin Bieber. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool, man. Like, you know. <laughs> Obvious choice here. What the fuck? Uh, did you guys notice who uh, Kurt was? No. Kurt. He's one the, of the old teammates. Yeah. He, he's the guy that uh, uh, he was Irv's old coach. Yes. He, he's the one that's a total fucking dick. Yeah. Yes. He Come is. On, Kurt. Dewey Cox's dad in Dewey Cox. Oh, no kidding. Walk hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wrong kid died. Wrong kid died. <laughs> so that's, he is a troped actor. Then, yes. Basically, yes. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, those old teammates, like, fuck those guys, yeah. man. They, they treat him like absolute shit. You're not allowed to be mean to John Candy. No. You can't do this. Um, and you give him Except for Roger. Hates. Roger, we love hey, Roger. Hey, Roger was great, right? <laughs> At the same time, you have to think about this, though. John Candy won uh, Irv Blitzer. Sorry, sorry. I got to you got to separate it here, yeah. guys. Okay, it's really tough. I know. Irv Blitzer got his gold medals taken away. Two gold medals for hiding weights in the front of his sled. Yes. That we find out. That means so did his teammates. So they so lost did their his gold teammates. Medals. They had to have had their gold medals taken away as well. And if you're an Olympian. Are you it's just going to be like, uh, you, oh, oh, it's not a big deal, man. <laughs> Sorry, I, man. I thought I we, know you just wanted to win. <laughs> yeah, we wanted to win too. We get it. Like I know. This do you movie, say that? No. This movie does take some liberties, but like uh, I was looking at like a video or something like that, and apparently that's perfectly legal. Totally. Oh shit. To it, add weight is, and it's actually recommended, right? They said <clears throat> they said it's a safety measure. Uh, they have minimum and maximum weights that they that are okay. allowed. And the weight of the sled's calculated by the total weight of the sled and crew, so they're allowed to add weight to get them to counter it a to bit. count. Like if if their crew is less lighter, okay, then yep. they can add more weight. Yeah, but you know you don't go over the maximum. Like you're not so allowed to. Okay. Maybe. So maybe he added too much or something. Uh, I don't know. It seems like it's a safe. Th- what they're saying is it's a safety thing. Like you can't be nah. less than this, and you can't be more than this. Right. 
or else you're going to crash and things are going to be sure. bad. Okay. So they're saying this is the weight limit. Go wherever you want inside of and it. It's really for your safety. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I see. And like this is kind of a also kind of a weird thing for John Candy to betray because like he just does so much good in all the movies that he's in. Right. Like he's John Candy, and it seems like he's that as we've come to suspect in real life he's just such a fucking good guy and so like when they brought up him cheating i'm like there'll be a stipulation later where it's like it was this and that but yeah. like when he admits it i'm like yeah. oh fuck yeah. man you're like no yeah, yeah but man. it's kind of cool to see him in that light <laughs> yeah you know? like he he did he did do that he made that's a mistake true. yeah that's true and you start running into the 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 meanness of the competitors the mean east german guy <laughs> hey jamaica <laughs> East Germany, uh, yeah. But I do love that line. Yule Brenner says people are always afraid of what's different. Mm -hmm. That's a cool... Throughout this whole movie, there's a lot of uh, things showing people maybe hating you because you're a different color or you're from a different country, and it shows that yeah. like you shouldn't do that kind of a thing. But again, things that didn't happen in real life, they were not bullied. Right. People loved, loved them. Loved it. Yeah. They were like, fuck yes, Jamaica. And think about it from a... A bo Olympic bobsled organization. This is the greatest thing that's ever happened to bobsledding. But that's cool. Get the Jamaicans in here. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, it's somewhere where you think no one would ever bobsled. People are going to tune in and watch bobsledding. Yeah, they want to see this. Now. Yeah. So, yeah. so again, the, none of this bullying happened. Everybody fucking loved the Jamaicans right off the bat. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's super cool. To, it's a, that's super cool to read. And it, I mean, like, I guess it's like you know, like paraplegics or something doing uh, uh, curling. I'll tune in. Have to I'll that's got to be brutal, man. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> fucking go. Dope as shit, right? That's awesome. <laughs> dope ass shit, man. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> do you do you guys see the fulfillment of the sport of bobsledding? I do not. <laughs> no. Because I, I was I'm going to be honest with you. No. <laughs> I, I was thinking about it the other day going, okay, you're on a four-man bobsledding team. You're Unless you're the driver who's got so much pressure on him. You're you just run really hard for five seconds and then just put your head down. So you're you're riding a roller you, coaster. I guess you lean. Maybe but you're a weight man. You're riding a roller coaster with your head down, yeah. like not seeing anything that's happening. You're right. just going, oh god, oh god, oh god. Like it just seems so unfulfilling to if, me. It, if you are like a fan of bobsledding or anything like that, and you know more, and like you like tell us, give us I the would glory. Love to hear that. Give us the glory of the sport because it just doesn't seem like an athletic. Feet right to me, what, you know. Yeah. Other than getting going and the absolute insanity that <laughs> yeah, ensues, nine I the death. bravery alone <laughs> is probably <laughs> maybe why that's. Yeah, maybe that's why because seeing like you've seen that was it was it like last Olympics or something like that? There was like the whole team diet or some shit. Uh, that, it was really? like oh a God. really brutal crash. Maybe maybe f eight years ago or something like that. But I can't imagine going that. Every fast. run is death defying. <laughs> yes. Are you kidding me? Dude. I do kind of want to see it in person, though. Oh, I'd love I bet to it'd see be it. Fucking it's awesome. like the first time you ever saw a, an Olympic-sized half pipe yeah. for snowboarding. Oh, Have you ever oh. seen one in person? No, no. You see it on TV, and you're like, "Oh, that's cool," but then you see it in real life. The walls are 25 feet tall, and it's at an incline like this, hell track level. <clears throat> yeah, so it, you dude. you're looking at a bobsled track, going, "Okay, whatever." But I have to imagine that it is just steep oh as God, fuck dude. and they're going 90 miles an hour past boom it's it is it is the quintessential let's be honest guys it's like hey uh the four of us in this room we're gonna <laughs> oh my God. we're gonna do a bobsled team we could do that <laughs> we could do it we okay. could do that okay, so who's, who's the driver yeah. who's driving who's driving okay let's who do, do we it. trust our life with who's that's the gonna, most that's focused gonna, who's the most focused? literally jeremy's driving this podcast right now <laughs> so he should probably be jeremy <laughs> Um, I am. Who's the fastest runner? Ooh. Uh, well, if I still had good knees, I'd put myself <laughs> in that. But you know, I'm not. So I could be pretty fast. I could be fast. I, I think could, maybe I, think I could be fast. You might. You might want me at as a as a number two because okay. I have the most weight just going down. Okay. You okay. know, okay. that's fine. That's fine. I'll take Middle break, man. You're your third man. Okay. Your break move. So, all, right. all right, there we go. So right. we got our we got our bobsled team. All right, right. Uh, this is our last podcast ever. Yeah, there We're going we go. to the Olympics. See all you right. guys. See you on NBC. See I you. love it. Later. We'll see you. We'll see you February third. All right, uh, but <laughs> you're just like this is quintessential. Like you're talking about. Yeah. Have you ever seen it in real life? No, we haven't. So naturally, I'm just at home eating cheese balls <laughs> on a couch, just like uh, oh, no, the, the, oh, that sucks. That's, that's not that fucking hard. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and hey, you're the, hey, listen, you're the champion at that. 
<laughs> you know, let's, let's just put that out there. Like, everyone's a champion at their own thing, and we're all champions at looking at our phones yeah. and judging people. Okay? Yeah. Oh, my God. It's just one big judge. <laughs> that's, 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 the, uh, that's the Olympics in general for me, <laughs> is me sitting at home going, you fucked up on that triple sow cow. <laughs> Jesus. You fucking idiot. Oh, my God. They're going to mark you for that. Oh. <laughs> Must suck to suck. Yeah. That was a bad musical choice for your rendition of your <laughs> gymnastic dance. Oh, you he know? touched he touched the wall like the bobsled hit the wall. Yeah, yeah. That's a deduction. No. Sorry. Yeah, you, you started too soon for your run. I don't know. <laughs> Over the line. That's that's basically <laughs> yeah. Over the line. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Smokey, you're over the line. <laughs> <laughs> rules are rules. This isn't Nom. <laughs> All right, so while they're out in a bar that night, Yule Jr. and Sanka get into a fight with the German team members. Doris and Irv are not happy, but the team started training and getting their minds back into focus. The next night, the team qualifies for the Olympics. While celebrating, Irv gets a letter from the judges informing him that the Jamaican team has been disqualified. Irv angrily confronts the men in charge and convinces them to reinstate the Jamaican team. After the opening ceremony, Junior's father arrives and tells him to come home. Junior stands his ground, much to Yule's delights. Did you guys hear a TIE fighter sound effect when they were whipping by? In the, did you hear that? It's purposeful. Wait, they, what? They put a TIE fighter sound effect in uh, when they were going down. Like It's just like one quick shot of them skipping down the fucking During ice. like the, 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 the trial run, during yeah. the qualifying run? The yeah. real run? Like, yeah. Whatever they sound like. You, Jeremy knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jeremy knows. Jeremy, you check that for us? Thanks, man. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh I shit. didn't know that. Yeah, it's, if you watch it back, it's, a, it's like a little quick TIE fighter sound. <laughs> Untra- I like, I'm going to keep throwing untrackable facts to Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, check, like, you check this. Uh, the, that's the sound they make. Thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, thank you. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> We'll, we'll have to keep saying this till we get a camera on the man, but Jeremy is the one in charge of our YouTube. He's got all these beautiful cameras here. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, I do like you the fact, fact too, that. That, that the German guy, the, the, like they're, the guy that they meet in the bar again here, too, his name's Josef Gruhl. His <laughs> real just, name? Just gr- No, just in the character. character name? His character's name is Josef Gruhl. <laughs> Irv says, like, oh, yeah, that's Irv. Josef Gruhl. Josef well, Gruhl. Well, it, that's, that's actually, if you, if you translate that, Specifically to American, like to English, it's actually Joe Cool. Ah, so Yo Ghoul is Joe Cool. Joe Cool. Yeah, you get it. Can you check that, Jeremy? Yeah, you check that. Out. <laughs> Tran- check that translation for me, real quick, man. Thank he's, you. He's on the Marlboro. <laughs> he's the Marlboro man. <laughs> I also the jacket. He is. <laughs> I did not realize that apparently, like late eighties. Canada was a country music hotspot. See, and everybody has cowboy hats on. I was questioning the, the music transition earlier, and then they got to this, and I'm like, okay. Yeah, I guess. Like, I guess. Is this what we do here in Calgary? I think, yeah. like, you think they're a different country, but I guess it's just, they're just our northern neighbors. Northern neighbors. You know? Square dance. It's just colder where they do it. Yeah. That's all it is. I no. did. I really dig the 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 transformation of Yule Brenner, uh, and then, which leads to the transformation of Junior Bevel. Right? Yeah. Is that, that scene where he's like, no, no, no. He takes him into the bathroom. He's like, I see pride. I see mm-hmm. power. Oh, see a badass mother that don't take no lip off of nobody. It's very it's emotional. Cool. It's really good. And the best part is Yule, Yule just wants to get him pumped up. Mm-hmm. He doesn't expect that he's going to run out the door. <laughs> and then um, he, he where are you going? He does it. He just takes <laughs> yeah. it like, oh, shit. Yeah, I <laughs> oh, created shit. a monster. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. It's, he's going to destroy you, Junior. <laughs> it, it's funny. When I when I need to get like uh, worked up and pumped up for like a workout or something, like up, when, up, up. Yeah. when we're about to go ahead and podcast, before you guys actually show up here, I'm I'm in the shower and I just turn the turn the water down to like super cold, but then I have I have uh, thunder and lightning from Rad no, playing, no. Yeah, but yeah. then overdubbed with I see pride, I see power, I see a bad. Mo-. That's what I do to listen. That's what I listen yeah, to to get I, pumped up. I do a similar thing, but yeah. I have one of those mirrors in, in the shower that's kind of like you know that no fog mirrors or whatever. And yeah, whenever yeah. I look at it, I look like an orangutan that just got out of the river. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. And so it kind of diminishes my power. <laughs> Pride in your I'm, power. I'm yeah. trying to go for. Yeah, God, I see a badass orangutan <laughs> that just got out of the river. <laughs> it's, <laughs> I, uh, it's, it's, it's it's not good. Uh, I just have a John Farnham montage in my head, but you're an orangutan. I got it. Okay, ruined dirty, it. dirty orangutan. It's <laughs> yikes. No one likes. Um. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> I like their dynamic. The, those these two, Yule Brenner and Junior, their dynamic together because they learn so much from each other in yeah, such yeah. a short span. 
guys, the Yul Brenner is such a powerhouse of a, of a dude teaching this kind of like, you know, like menial, like kind of softer human to, to be kind of like a man, you yeah. know? And then opposite, Junior's yeah. kind of teaching him to be like, hey, people aren't so bad, you know? Yeah. Just let people in a little bit. Well, and then they have that flipped moment now <coughs> where, uh, you know, Yule's talking about how he's going to go live in this pot, this palace. Because mm-hmm. Sanka's kind of being a dick. And then, he and then he's, yeah, he, like that's where Sanka almost takes it over the line. Like, hey, bro, I thought you were this fun, loving, well, cool guy. Well, he's cooking spam on a hot plate. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck are you doing? But yeah, but then, then I've been there, man. Junior comes to his rescue. He's like, no, no, man, listen, you go get your palace. Like, you know what? Yeah, man. That's where the Queen of England lives. But fucking, you go. You work hard enough. You be like my dad, who had nothing, and now is the, one of the richest guys in Jamaica. You go get it. Yeah. If I could, I would just have a sitcom. Of those two, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Turns out after the Olympics, they got an apartment together. They got an apartment. Just... Oh, I'm apartment together. <laughs> That's what they do. That's genius. I would. Love I would that. watch that. I would watch that, and then like Sanka can be a re- reoccurring yeah. character. You know what I mean? He, he oh, opens the door, yeah. and everybody goes. Yeah. 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 And he has to. He has <laughs> to wait for five seconds before he can say his his line. <laughs> Every time he comes in, he trips over the door, and, the, and they yeah. ask him if he's dead. He's like, Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Hey. <laughs> he said it. He, he said, said the line. The line. Uh. <laughs> Fuck. And this is copyrighted shit. If anyone's listening, yeah. you can't take this. You can't no. steal our idea. Nope. <laughs> uh, I do need to mention uh, when they name the sled, though. Yeah. It's my favorite. Like, what are we going to call it? He goes, how about Tallulah? Tallulah. Tallulah. Sounds Whoa. like a cheap whore or some shit. <laughs> it, it, it was my mother's name. Tallulah's good. Tallulah. Tallulah. I like Tallulah. No, hey, Tallulah. Yeah, beautiful yeah. name. What, what about you, Star? What are we going to call it? I say we call it cool runnings hey. and i i want to come out and i want to admit this to everyone that uh on my in my yearbook my senior quote was peace be to journey <laughs> <laughs> i just want to admit that to everybody. It, 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 did your picture yeah. have like rock yep. like, i had color. I, that year i had the the hat like the fake hat with the dreadlocks on yeah. and peace be the journey though I, I i know that's stupid but like it's a that's a nice sentiment Peace be the journey, right? Of 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 the sled, of their lives, of everything. Like that's a very nice Disney Jamaican yeah. sentiment. And forgive that us. was my yearbook yeah. quote. I love it. Forgive us if it's because I don't know because the Rastafarian is like a religious movement. Yes, I don't know if it's like offensive to be talking about it in this light at all. So sorry, I'm just I'm just not I'm just ignorant about this, I guess. But like it is a great thing to keep in mind. Like peace be the journey. It's it's, it's, it's such a good message yeah. over, overall and it seems like their whole culture is kind of based on that and it just yeah i think that's why people are attracted to it yeah rastafarian farianism is based off of the belief that holly selassie i was the king uh, and i'm getting i'm probably gonna butcher this was the king of like africa at one point okay. and and that he will return and he's god and he will come back and marijuana is totally acceptable Fuck and yeah, yeah. So it's a it, you can read a bunch about it. Like I got into Bob Marley quite a bit when I was younger, Same. and that's where you can learn a lot about that. And yeah, it's it's a beautiful, it's a Buddhist type. Like just hey, sure. just treat everybody good, man. Everything's great. No. You got a lot. You can't be mad at that. No, at all. Your beard says "Peace be the whiskey," but that's it's <laughs> fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Whatever. Right? <laughs> give me, uh, your sure. beard says, "Give me some bitters." <laughs> yeah. High proof be the whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but then, but then, I think this is John Candy's best moment of the movie is when he goes into the IOC. Yes, oh, and he fights oh, for him. God, that is dude. that is John Candy for me. This is this is everything I want. Um, I didn't say that the my my shower montage ends with John Candy <laughs> fighting for my rights. <laughs> Do to what you want to me. Yeah, but don't take it away from these guys. Yeah. yeah. And I'm one of those guys in this scenario. <laughs> thanks, John. I'm like, thanks, John. <laughs> thanks, man. Okay, let's go. I really needed that, dude. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, this is like, I, I want to say, I want to like, if they were, I, I, I want to go back and see if like there's a YouTube memoriam of like what, if they had for him at the Oscars or something like that, or if there's anything like that yeah, online. Dope, this right? is one of his mm-hmm. great scenes, I, I got to say. Like, there's so much because it's like I said. There's you don't see him in a negative light really ever in his career. Yeah. Uh, and then like he did cheat. Like that's got kind of sucks. I don't want that for him. You know. Yeah. And then, like to see him redeem himself right here, then and there. I mean, like don't just take it out on me, not them. Like they deserve to be here. I I really don't. To be right. honest, you know. Yeah, yeah. It is very very human, and I just that's that's John Candy. As every episode we do with John Candy, <laughs> it's it just seems like the man. 
It's one of those things, like, when there's a moment in a movie like this that is, like, obviously there's supposed to be comedy to it. There's a major juxtaposition of these Jamaicans who are in the bobsled world in Calgary. Yeah. That's what ju- that's the definition of juxtaposition, <laughs> yeah, obviously. Yeah, and that's the whole point of the movie, yeah. It, it, correct. And, you're, you're like, there's going to be comedy that ensues, but when you have this moment in a movie like this that breaks you into this moment of focus... That you're like, God, yeah, like, and and just for some reason, every now and again, like, you'll find this in a movie, and this is the moment in this movie for sure that like you're not laughing about anything, you're not thinking yeah. about any of the laugh moments you had, you were literally focused on John Candy and the and what he's trying to express to this board of 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 people, mm-hmm. and it's it's brilliant, man. I really do love it. Uh, even when they do qualify for you know, like you stand up cheering and everything like that, you know, like they they get the under the under the minute just just oh. by a hair, you know. Uh, but it is it is a a, a cool testament to this movie because they like what I said in the beginning is like they wanted it to be more funny, but or it was it was ultimately more of just like a sports movie, yeah. uh, the first draft, but they wanted it to be more funny. I think it's both because it's really funny, but in that moment you're like, fuck yes, they you did know? it, they did make it, you know. Uh, it's one of those kind of rare movies. I mean, I know like Miracle is more of a serious movie. There's not really many comedic moments and of it. A pretty damn true story too. Great, yeah. great movie. <laughs> it's a very true. It's actually, very to true. Not true. At Turns all, out but they did <laughs> lose the game, yeah. but yeah. in real life. But. <laughs> great movie, but uh, like like in this movie, it, it does it does hold that those two tones together really really well. Yeah, and I feel every emotion. Well, let's finish this off. So on the first day of competition, after a bad run, the team is in last place. The team realizes that they are trying to be something they aren't and fully embrace their Jamaican side. It works because the next day's run was much better. On their final run, the Jamaican team is looking like they might win a medal, but the old sled falls apart and causes a crash. They pick up the sled and carry it across the finish line where everyone around them cheers. I do like how they count in German. Yeah, but uh, s- Swiss. But is that what they speak in Switzerland? It's ein, zwei. It's, that's uh, technically it's German, German, right? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. It's. So they speak German. <laughs> Jeremy, Jeremy coming through. Dude, we didn't even what? ask him. Thanks. <laughs> God, he's good. You're right. Yeah, because he's copying the Swiss team because he thinks that's what they're supposed to right. do. Right. I like how they do that. Like it's like this is like that's Dutch. how bobsled is is counted down. <laughs> well, well Darius is just he, he's a he's not in this. He doesn't know anything about the sport, so he's just watching the Swiss team going. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's exactly. what I got to do. And he right. he starts hitting his teammates on the head because that's yeah. what the Swiss team do. They're like. Get the fuck off me. What are you doing? <laughs> That's a really good point. It's he's he's taking this as uh this is what successful people yes. do in this world, yep. which I'm so sure we'll what, do it. what he's watched maybe his dad beforehand. Yep. Well, this is what my dad did to be successful in what he did at the time. So I'm gonna do this now in this sport because this is what successful people do. Yeah. 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 That's a good point. If it and the the I this is my favorite part of the movie. I think the biggest lesson of the movie is there the first race went bad yeah. and Sanka confronts Doris about the Einz Fein's drive stuff, you know, like, and he says, he says, all I'm saying, man, is if we walk Jamaican, talk Jamaican, and is Jamaican, then we sure as hell better bobsled Jamaican. Jamaican. Yeah. Like, it reminds Doris that there's such a valuable lesson of copying other people's styles and not being yourself and not being authentic that they're like, fuck yeah, mm-hmm. what are we doing? Let's just be, and then they show up singing and dancing yeah. and they rented a truck and they're singing the bobsled yeah. team they do their new uh get them up feel the rhythm feel the right like then all of a sudden things work out better because they're relaxed and they're chilling out and, and before this even the announcers like they're when they're uh not qualifying but doing the actual race before they kind of realize what they need to do and just kind of be themselves like the announcers are even just like that i don't see this team even getting a Gold medal, bronze, or a silver, you know? It's yeah. just like, that's how announcers talk about the Hawkeyes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me just break this down a little bit. Uh, it's just, uh, I can't get, I can't Hawkeye get into Hawkeye football, it. baby. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Yeah. Come on, hot guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hot guys. <laughs> no, you're right. It is a really cool message, and I, I love how they show back up. And it's just like, people eat that shit up, too. Yeah. You know, like, it's it's not just a sport. It is It is kind of a PR thing as well. Yeah. Yeah, when yeah. And again, some more things that that actually didn't happen in real life. The uh the 
the in real life they crash because of driver error. Right. Oh, is that right? Not a sled malfunction, and you know that again that makes for a better story to be like, no, they were, yeah, doing, they great. were doing great, and then that damn sled fell apart. And in fact, the sled was never borrowed. They 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 somebody gave them a sled right away because they loved the Jamaican team so much. So there was no old sled. There yeah. was. There, it didn't. It crashed. It was driver error. Like you hit the wall and then couldn't correct and crashed. Which is <sighs> like talking about like our our last week's episode of nihilism of the matrix and stuff like that. It's like it's nice to find out that real life was actually a little bit more nice. Yeah, <laughs> than no than kidding. In the movie, you know? God damn. <laughs> like, oh yeah, fuck yeah, it was my fault. Shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I to be honest, like while I was watching this movie, I w- I honestly kept on thinking to myself, oh that's cool, they got a new sled. Like they just painted this new decal on it, yeah. And I just, I was like, that's not the same sled. In my <laughs> head, there was never a moment. Oh shit! As a kid, that I believed it was the sl- the same sled. You just thought the new sled. <laughs> I was just like, oh cool, the new sled. Well, they should have kept the old one. Well, why didn't they just use the old one if they did so good with it? <laughs> it's, I think it's common fact if you paint something that's really really old, yeah. in a new color, it, yeah. it's better in every single way gotcha so gotcha. that's probably where you were thinking that well, i don't blame you no yeah and apparently apparently you uh you drive these sleds as if you're flying a kite yeah oh, yes. because it's <laughs> yeah. just strings it's not a steering wheel that's not it at all <laughs> and that's what you do that's how I'm, the world exists. We're assuming that's correct, right? I have to assume. There's never been any dispute in my <laughs> no mind, one's ever Mike, showed me because what it no like. one's shown me anything other than this movie about bobsledding. I like uh, <sighs> one. Of, I think it's John Candy's. One of his lines is, "If you're not enough without it, you'll never be enough with it." Yeah, yeah. I love that oh, line man. in this movie. With talking about gold medals and shit yeah. like that, when he was, uh, I think he's talking D- Darius down yep. about Darius like, asks why asked he cheated, him, and that line just sums it up for me. And um, uh, it just it just makes it uh, makes his character and John Candy the the man just be even more lovable. You know. But, yeah. Does it so? Asking about some continuity here uh, before we finish up. It, does that mean that Darius says you had two gold medals, you had it all? Why'd you do the thing you did? Does that mean he cheated after he got his gold medals? Oh, geez, I don't know. I don't. I that's tough. Might, like, Either he like cheated to, me, to get them, or yeah. then he went to the next Olympics right, and, and cheated. Right. Well, it sounds like that's to me I'm maybe like they just kind of like investigated him. Maybe. Yeah. Like after gotcha, he did gotcha. win. Them, okay. And they just kind of like. Look through the sled. Maybe then they found weights or something yeah. like that. That's okay. what it seemed like That's to tough. me. That's tough. Yeah, uh, like I was just like, uh, th- these are just little <laughs> moments that happen well, to me. You'll be happy to know it didn't happen in real life. So there's <laughs> really, right. we just made it up. Sounds good, there's man. No Irv Blitzer. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, weights are fine. Don't worry about <laughs> it. <laughs> oh wait, oh wait. So everything that happened in this movie uh, was legal. Great. It's make believe. It. It's all. It's all make believe. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's that's the thing about well, movies. It's. Kind of crazy. <laughs> you want to tell a good story? Yeah, <laughs> Disney. No, well, the cra- like Sean said earlier, the crash scene, uh, they, except for the extremely close up shots, yeah. shots that was actual real footage of them crashing. It's brutal, it looked man, like man. the dude's head got ripped off. Yeah, dude, where his head's up against Several the wall. Several times. How do you walk away from that? Oh God, dude, it's terrifying. Your your neck is just at the mercy of an ice slide. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so that that really did happen because there is footage there. Uh, but then I questioned. I go, why didn't they? Why did they lift up this bobsled and like put it on their shoulders and carry it? Mm-hmm. Didn't happen. They just put. There's footage of the, the guy that the main driver just walked down and he just kind of walked down and he was waving while sec- some security guards came and they all pushed the sled like separately down no, down across the See, that yeah i don't i don't like that sound that <laughs> sounds like an olympic athlete to i don't me. like that it more so yeah so, uh, like, when when real life is better that's actually that's actually no i don't better. that's not better that's I, I love cinema is better is, is this point put it on your shoulders and then yeah. th- is this the only time a slow clap has worked for you uh it's certainly or did it it's not, certainly yeah, a, one hoping. of three <laughs> what are the other slow claps? We'll get there. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I I don't know. I I just I t- I still teared teared up it's at this great. one. Like it's such a cool moment. It's Hans really Zimmer great. soundtrack in the background. The the mean old East German guy. Uh, yeah. It makes yes. sense that 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 yo cool <laughs> yo ghoul <laughs> is is starting the the East German guy is is starting it for Hans in this and you got the music that's happening. <laughs> And have you ever been a part of a slow clap? I've never had. It doesn't happen in no. real life. There's no such thing. No, God they don't exist. It. Doesn't um, happen. You're right. I want to. 
It never happens. I want to be you, unplugged. Can Fuck you, this life. Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine being like like a ways off from wherever that was, but still within earshot and just like way off? You just hear. It. But then it is that a slow cut? Oh, it's it's oh. getting closer. Yes. Okay. All right. It's like when a rainstorm starts. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like like you're just like oh shit! If somebody start. Somebody's oh, doing something. a slow clap. Dude, That's yeah. badass. <laughs> slow Whoa. clap. Something crazy happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, all right. I'll be a part of this. Yeah. Cool. Why not? <laughs> We're drinking beers too. Oh, fuck not, dude. Oh. Uh, and like at the same time, again, I got to go back to my kid brain here, right? Um, you see this and they're like, oh, man. Yeah, they are. They're carrying yeah. it across. Real integrity move, right? That's what I thought in my kid brain. Real integrity move. And then at the same time, so and I'm just like, fuck yeah, I'm slow clapping too while I'm watching this movie. And you're like, so those guys got the gold, right? <laughs> <laughs> they just gave it to him, right? Because the Olympics all about integrity, right? <laughs> they were no. so fast that they still crossed the line. <laughs> yeah, they still did. That thought crossed my mind. I'm like, they gave it to him, right? They gave him the gold, right? Like, honorary gold? Isn't that a thing? Uh, like, that, that's what, Participation. Uh, yeah. Come they, on. They no, won. They, I, sorry, they did not. Oh, uh, what? No, but what they the returned fuck? as equals. Oh. Four years later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what it said. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody else appreciated that too because they would have gotten their doors blown off by the fucking Jamaican <laughs> doors team. Blown off. Yo, we better be friends with these guys because <laughs> they're be fucking friends. really fast. Really, now that they, really now that they're man. bobsledding Jamaican, holy shit. Ooh, wow. <laughs> Damn, son. Uh, you know, uh, Scott Scott Ganter from the Thought Catalog came up with this, and of course, I'm paraphrasing a bit. You made that name up, Scott Ganter. No. Uh, <laughs> throughout, he say, he made the point that throughout the movie, none of the characters finished their races. Right, Yule, Darius, and Junior got tripped up in the qualifier, and they just give up. Right, they 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 don't decide. Well, I'm still going to walk across that finish line with pride. They just well, I got tripped. I left. Same with Sanka. He crashes his push cart. Right before the finish line, and then just like, oh fuck this! I guess I don't. Right. I'm not going to win this race. Good. Uh, so like earlier in the movie, they had no reason to finish because they were trying to prove their worth to others. Okay. To try to, Darius was trying to prove how cool he was, and like I'm going to be following my father's footsteps. Yeah. Uh, but this time, they are finally finishing to prove their worth to themselves. Like, okay. which in turn earns everyone's respect. Mm -hmm. The fact that they actually took it to carry that say no we're finishing this race it shows how much they've all changed in the movie and i thought that was a cool sentiment that's really cool yeah i like that i, like that I do lot. like that yeah they cross and actually he pointed out that they don't cross the finish line in the bobsled they cross the finish line like a sprinter does on their feet ah yeah cool full runnings, circle man cool runnings dude full, full running. circle <laughs> full circle baby i don't know yeah it's it's a great ending man i'm good i, I can like see it. clearly now the rain is gone yeah, yeah. great stuff well, should we? One last thing. It's probably gonna bring all this whole thing down. All right. But uh, Hans Zimmer, who did the score for this, it's kind of a lot of island, uh, Jamaican kind of vibes, like a lot of those drum, lot of yep. island drums and stuff like Steel that. Steel pants. In in the soundtrack, um, a lot of uh, that as well in another movie that he did, uh, True Romance. Same kind of similar score. I just kind of noticed that, like when when it said his name, and then I heard the music. I'm like, oh, it kind of reminds me of True Romance. And uh, so if you watch, I don't know if he like recycled that because it's also in the '90s Maybe. as well. Um, but uh, cool scores, I like them a lot. Hans Zimmer's a cool, man. cool runnings, cool <laughs> runnings, cool <laughs> runnings of music. True Romance, same amount of syllables. Hey, <laughs> what? Hey. What? What? TikTok that man. <laughs> <laughs> Matrix. I don't know. All right, right? Yeah. Well, we did it. Uh, we made it to the end. We got to give our rating, our critical review, modern day rating. AJ, what do you got? Uh, I still have a lot of fun when I watch this movie, man. Uh, it's it's hard not to be there with John Candy, especially. Um, you, you've got like I, I am actually. I really like Leon uh, as an actor. Yeah. He was. Uh, I really do like him, especially like hit in this and the Temptations um, uh, movie that they made. Dougie Doug is hilarious. Um, I, I don't know, man. I, I still have a really great time watching this movie. Uh, I, I'll, I'll watch it anytime it's on. Am I going to go way far out of my way to throw it on? Maybe not. But at the same time, I love watching it. So I'm going to give this a 6.5. 
eight. Six point eight for the age. Just Sean, what do you got, man? Uh, everything AJ said. That's uh, perfect. It's it's fun. It's a John Candy. Um, and even like John Candy driven movies could be great, but by just him. But this movie's great because of the bobsled team, uh, or whoever it is, Bill or Bob. I don't know. <laughs> but um, <laughs> the the whole the whole cast and and everyone's journeys are are fully realized, and I love that about it. Um, I'm gonna give it a six point five. 6.5 for Sean. Uh, this is so rewatchable for me. Yeah. Uh, it's just you could put this on at any point. It's yep. fun. There's not uh, there's not much wrong with it. The the thing that brought me down quite a bit on this viewing is the to learn that the majority of it wasn't true. Sure. That's kind of like, eh, OK, yeah. I would have I like screw the Internet era. Like, I just want to believe it's true. Just say you made a new movie. <laughs> just say you t you're telling a new story. Don't don't base it on it, that. Instead of saying based on a true story, it should say based on a true story. And then said the only thing that's true is that Jamaican did have a bobsled team. OK, OK, yeah. okay cool. Exactly. <clears throat> now I'm good. I'm ready to roll. So for me, like uh, 7.3, like it's just a solid, solid movie. Yeah. That gives us a an overall group critical rating of 6.86, which is going to put us right at right above Rad, right below the Burbs. I like it. I buy that. I buy that, too. I buy that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, our overall group rating is gospel. So Yeah, absolutely. Because you're going to yeah. have somebody that might be kind of a fanboy, but then the other two might bring them back down. So this yeah. is gospel. Yeah, un unfortunately, I would probably say I watch this more than the Burbs for show. Yeah, but uh, but you know, with Rad, I don't know. Gotta maybe get that it's for right show, man. Good stuff. Well, hope you enjoyed the episode. It means the world to have you here. Tune in next Wednesday for another great episode. We're going to be doing top five, bringing it back. Top five rom coms, rom which ooh, which you may go wow. ooh rom coms, but I I'm going to put out the thing there. We'll talk about it next week. That I mean, rom coms I think are some of the best movies. Some of my oh, yeah. favorites. Some of some of the best movies out there. And we're going to go back to reviews. Uh, we're doing Groundhog Day. On Groundhog Day. Wow. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. And if you're new to the podcast, go back in time. This time last year, check out our mini bite about life and death of the video rental store. Oh, yeah. That, that didn't get many no, listens. It <laughs> it's one of the least listened to episodes we did, but I also think it's one of the most important ones. I mean, that is the basis of this. And it's super important. It's super. There's a lot of information about what actually happened back then mm -hmm. and, and why we don't do this anymore. We don't have VHS. So yep. that's a fun one. I think you should go back and listen to it. Please yeah, do. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Okay, bye. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. Please stay in touch with us by following on all of our social media platforms at Confused Breakfast on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, and Confused Be Fast on Twitter. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast and leave a review on the podcast platform of your choice right now. Also, we have merch. You know you want to rep the Confused Breakfast in public. Mugs, stickers, shirts, all kinds of goodies. Go to confusedbreakfast.com for a direct link. And don't forget about our voicemail number, 319-804-9596. Links to everything you could ever need from us are in the show notes or at confusedbreakfast.com. This includes a way to follow all of us individually in our personal projects that we want you to check out. Mission of the day, tell your friends about us. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye -bye. Sibilance. 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 I don't appreciate your sarcasm. It's really rude. It's your house, dude. No. <laughs> no. No, it's not my house. Guys. I don't know this house. <laughs>